Oh, I hope Dr. Romano's still here. I'm thirsty. Maybe you'll give me something to drink. Dr. Romano. Oh, he's not there. Oh, is he over here? Oh, I, Dr. Romano, I just got off the beach. I'm kind of thirsty. Could I, could I have a little something to drink? I'm not going to give you anything to drink, but if you have a thirst, have a thirst for some knowledge. Let's go over a general chemistry problem. All right. This is a very important gen chem question, and um, there's some important things we need to know. I wrote down to you that we have a 60 gram sample of butane, C4H10, and a study for analysis. And I want to know what's the empirical formula. The empirical formula is the simplest formula. It gives us the simplest ratio of atoms. If I divide by the common denominator, it would be a two. So if you divided this by a two and this by a two, it would give you the simplest ratio of C2H5, which is the empirical formula. Part B of this question, I ask you to draw me two possible structures. Well, if you remember, carbon needs four bonds, hydrogen needs one. So if you laid out four in a straight line, and you give each carbon four bonds and attach the hydrogens, you would form butane. Or, instead of laying out four in a straight line, if you laid out only three and dropped a branch point in the middle, you would get two methyl propane. These would be two isomers. These are called isomers. Notice isomers have the same molecular formula, but they differ in their structure. Part C of this is a sure bet on your exam to find the percent of a particular atom. A sure bet? A sure bet. As you can see, find the percent of carbon. The total weight of this is 58. I got 58 by adding 12 times 4 plus 10. So the total weight is 58. Now there is four carbons and each carbon weighs 12. So 12 times 4 over 58 times 100 would give you the percent composition. Remember, Percent composition is nothing more than the part over the whole. So 12 times 4 over 58 times 100. Here's the hard one. This is a challenging one. Find the number of carbon atoms in the sample. Now, I'm going to hold your hand and go through this. And I know you would like to do this with me nice and slow, so I'll kind of coach you through it. We have 60 grams of C4H10. The first thing is we're going to convert it into moles by dividing by the weight. So one mole of C4H10 is 58 grams. Once we got it into moles, we got to convert it into molecules, and we need a conversion factor. One mole of C4H10, one mole of any compound for that matter, contains 6 to the 23rd molecules. If this is true, and it is, we cancel out the word moles of C4H10. Finally, I want atoms of carbon. In one molecule of C4H10, I hope you can see there are four atoms of carbon. And that makes the molecules go out. So we're left with atoms of carbon. So it's going to be 60 times 6 to the 23rd times 4 over 58. Now, the DAT exam is an exam where many times you have to do some very, very quick simplification. 58 is approximately 60. So as you can see, I rewrote this. I keep the numerator. The denominator, 58, is 60. And watch what I do. I cross out the 60s, and I'm left with 6 to the 23rd times 4, which is 24 to the 23rd. Or if I have to rewrite this, I move the decimal back one. If I move the decimal back one, I move this up one. So that would give me... Oops a daisy, that should be to the 24th. So if I move this back, I move this up. So 24 to the 23rd is the same as 2.4 times 10 to the 24th carbon atoms. I hope this gives you a good example of what you would expect for the death. They can ask any one of these possible questions. So what I like about this question, it's like doing four questions in one. I hope that gives you a nice understanding of a general chemistry type of question you're likely to see in the DAT exam. Wow, Dr. Romano, I like that. Do you have some raspberry iced tea? I really like raspberry iced I'm tea. I'm not going to give you anything. I'm going to go out now to the library to do some private studying. Good day to you, young lady. Okay, bye, Dr. Romano. Thanks for your help. I'm still thirsty.